We welcome you to our continuing discussion of the Book of Mormon. I'm Victor L. Ludlow, a professor of ancient scripture at Brigham Young University, and I have three colleagues uh, with me today as we're about ready to discuss some of the important chapters of Jacob. Uh, to my immediate left is Charles Swift, and next to him is Frank Judd, and on the opposite end is uh, a young professor by the name of Jared Ludlow that I've known for a few years. Welcome. We're glad to have you here with us as we discuss these chapters of Jacob 4 through 6. Jacob, of course, being that son born in the wilderness and uh, one who becomes the successor prophet, as it were, to Nephi. Uh, these chapters 4 to 6, uh, what can we anticipate here, uh, Frank? Well, just briefly, in, uh, as, a, as an overview, in Jacob chapter 4, Jacob mentions the law of Moses. In particular, he mentions how the Nephites correctly understood the intent of the law of Moses and how many of their Jewish brethren from the old world uh, misunderstood the law of Moses. And he uses that as a backdrop to prepare uh, them for chapter 5, which is Zenos' allegory of the olive tree. I think that it's interesting in, at the end of chapter 4 that Jacob mentions um, the reason why he is including chapter 5, which as we know is the longest chapter in the Book of Mormon. Uh, we know that Zenos was a prophet. We know that his writings were included on the brass plates. Uh, in 1 Nephi chapter 13, Nephi was told that the brass plates contained basically the same information as our current Bible except that they had more of the prophecies of the Holy Prophets and Zenos's prophecy was among them and so it sets the stage by letting us know that Zenos was one of those great prophets that was included in the brass plates but not the uh, the record of the Jews as we understood it. So, so Zenos has been quoted a little bit earlier like in chapter yes. 19 in 1st Nephi not near as much of course as Isaiah from the brass plates but uh, probably, I guess, would we agree, next to Isaiah, probably the most quoted from the brass plates, even more than, say, someone like a Jeremiah, who is a very, you know, major prophet, and a lot of his works would have been on those brass plates, but apparently, particularly for the theme of, of these Book of Mormon prophets, Zenos seems to have been a, a valuable resource for him. Absolutely. And I wish we knew more about him, obviously, um, but we do learn a little bit later in Helaman that he did seal his testimony with his life, so he was another prophet who became martyr for his, his teachings and his belief. Now, we don't even know what century he lived in. We don't know whether he was in that century or more from the time of Isaiah down to Lehi, or if he even preceded uh, Isaiah. Uh, obviously a, a significant prophet and one that uh, helps us understand some important things about the house of Israel. I think part of the purpose of these different works are to help us understand these different pro prophetic perspectives. Uh, Charles, could you read verse 8 there in Jacob 4? Sure. And let's just <coughs> see how this sort of sets the stage for some of this. Behold, great and marvelous are the works of the Lord. How unsearchable are the depths of the mysteries of him. And it is impossible that man should find out all his ways. And no man knoweth of his ways, save it be revealed unto him. Wherefore, brethren, despise not the revelations of God. All right, so despise not the revelations of God. We can't really fathom. And uh, what other insights do we get here that Jacob is just sort of setting us up for this allegory that's going to outline this scattering gathering of Israel, a, a process that's going to encompass thousands of years, and how could one have ever assumed or predicted uh, this type of an event? We can't begin to fathom the mind of God. We're told that from the beginning. What other insights are we getting from this fourth chapter? I think one thing we see, just going a couple more verses in verse 10, this idea of, wherefore, brethren, seek not to counsel the Lord, but to take counsel from his hand. For behold, ye yourselves know that he counseleth in wisdom and in justice and in great mercy over all his works. And I think, at least indirectly, indirectly this leads us to Zenos' allegory. 
with the idea of I'm going to present this allegory to you and it's it's for you to take counsel from mm -hmm. for you to learn from and and not make the mistakes that uh, predecessors have made and verse 11 also continues another I think preparatory step to the allegory talking about how we must be reconciled unto him God through the atonement of Christ his only begotten son and you know one of the struggles that the Jews had during the time of Lehi was their rejection of, of some of these prophecies and so forth mm -hmm. um, and and they're you know maybe seeking to counsel the Lord rather than receive counsel from him and and so that's kind of what <clears throat> Jacob is is trying to address is how the need to be reconciled under Christ that he needs to be the center of their focus and their worship in verse 14 it also mentions something similar to that where it talks about uh, many of those Jews who were looking beyond the mark and uh, Elder Maxwell once said that the mark is Jesus Christ and uh, apparently there were those who were uh, missing the most significant part of, of the Old Testament and that is restored through the writings of Zenos which focuses on how this all, the whole plan uh, was to focus on the gospel of Jesus Christ and to bring people into the covenant so that's an important uh, setting for chapter 5 as well I, don't, go ahead. I was just going to say I think it's important in that verse that Frank referred to this idea of they sought for things that they could not understand and to me that's an amazing uh, insight that instead of focusing on the Savior and focusing on that mark they, they tried to find things that they couldn't understand and it ended up being fruitless for them and then he summarizes as it, as it were in verse 18 behold my beloved brethren I will unfold this mystery unto you if I do not by any means get shaken from my firmness in the spirit and stumble because of my over anxiety for you you know he's, he's really anxious he really wants to present something of great value to them and, and he doesn't want to you know turn them away from this message that he's about delivered well let's turn to chapter 5 and talk about this uh, rather significant chapter I mean those who have read the Book of Mormon a number of times this is undoubtedly one of the chapters that they identify with and, and not just because it's the longest <laughs> of all the chapters in the Book of Mormon uh, what what's an allegory I mean it's called an allegory of Zenith uh, at least that's the term that we use it and it's that's the term that's there in the chapter heading is that just a simple parable uh, what, what what kind of a literary form is it? you're you're involved in literature here Charles what what is an allegory well I think that we do have some examples of where parables are allegories but it's not every parable is an allegory. And I, I think maybe the simplest way to understand it is an allegory is an extended metaphor where each of the elements signifies something else. So you may have a parable that has several elements in it, but not each one of them is symbolic of something outside of itself. But with an allegory, you've got this narrative that's an extended metaphor. And each element, the tree, the servant, every single element is a symbol of something else and it has a unifying theme. So, so it's very symbolic. <clears throat> you, you can take this item and connect it here and this item and connect it and connect it. And yeah. so it just becomes more and more complex. I guess the longer the, these metaphors are drawn out and, and the, the different stages are discussed there. Exactly. And I think also one of the great things about it is you can learn more from it. Uh, in, in a way it becomes more complex and in a way it's very simple. 